Good afternoon and welcome to the July Ordinary Council meeting. I will now hand over to Councillor Greg James to present a welcome to country. Thank you, um, Mayor Sally and my fellow councillors. Firstly, I pay my uh, respects to our ancestors. I acknowledge our elders, both past, present and emerging. I'd like to acknowledge the Yorta Yorta Nations, uh, all its people whose land we meet on today. So on behalf of the Elders Council, the 16 family groups and the eight tribes who proudly share in the status of traditional owners of this land, I say a very warm welcome to this wonderful land, country motorways. Thank you, Minister. Thank you, Councillor James. Item two, acknowledgement. We, Greater Shepparton City Council, acknowledge the Yorta Yorta peoples of the land, which now comprises Greater Shepparton. We pay our respect to their tribal elders. We celebrate their continuing culture and we acknowledge the memory of their ancestors. Item three, privacy notice. This public meeting is being streamed live via our Facebook page, <coughs> made available for public access on our website, along with the official minutes of this meeting. All care is taken to maintain your privacy. However, as a visitor in the public gallery, it is assumed that your consent is given in the event that your image is broadcast to the public. It is also assumed that your consent is given to the use and disclosure of any information that you share at the meeting, including personal and sensitive information to any person who accesses those recordings or minutes. Item four, governance principles. Council considers that the recommendations contained in this agenda gives effect to the overarching governance principles stated in section 9.2 of the Local Government Act 2020. These principles are as follows, and they are uh, numbered one to nine on page six of the agenda. Item five, apologies, councillors. Do we have any apologies this afternoon? Uh, I'll move the apology received from Councillor Seymour Abdullah. Thank you, Councillor Dobson. Can I have someone second that? I'll second that motion, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Adam. May I go to the vote? All those in favour? Carried unopposed. Item six, declarations of conflict of interest. Do we have any conflicts this afternoon, Councillors? No, we now go on to item seven, confirmation of minutes of the previous meeting. There is a recommendation. I will ask, is there any items of the minutes opposed? Right. Can I have someone move that recommendation? I'll move that the minutes of the 21st of June 2022 council meeting as circulated be confirmed. Councillor Dobson, can I have someone second that? Thank you, Councillor Spinks. We'll now go to vote. All those in favour? Motion carried on opposed. Item eight, public question time, nil received. Item nine, deputations and petitions, nil received. Councillors, we now go to page eight of the agenda, item 10.1, and that's Membership Appointment Disability Advisory Committee for 2022-2025. There is a recommendation. Can I have a councillor please put that forward as a motion? Thank you, Councillor Sphinx. Thank you, Mayor Sally. I'd like to move the recommendation to a motion that the Council, one, appoint the following community representatives and service providers to the Disability Advisory Committee, DAC, for a term of three years, commencing on 20th July, 2022 and concluding on 18th July 2025 as listed on page 8 of the agenda and to acknowledge and thank the outgoing members of the committee for their contributions to the DAC. Thank you Councillor Spinks. Can I please have someone second that? Councillor Summer. Councillor Spinks, would you like to speak to the motion? Thank you, yes. Um, the purpose of the DAC is to provide a platform for advocacy and representation on issues relating to people living with a disability in the community to support and inform council future directions relating to issues affecting those with a disability and to inform, uh, in, inform good decision making and enhance inclusive practices across council. This is a, a very important advisory committee to the work that we do, having an inclusive and accessible uh, community infrastructure assets is uh, essential to our community, being able to fully participate and enjoy um, this wonderful community we live in. And having this committee means that we have people providing lived experience, providing feedback, providing advice to us um, on the ground that are living and experiencing and able to actually talk to us um, and uh, connect with us and raise things with us. So I'm very proud to be the councillor rep on this particular committee. Um, and I've great, I want to take the opportunity to thank the um, committee members who are, and service providers who have been contributing to the DAC over the last two and a half years, which are Diane Baglin, Tony Bell, Jenny Crow, Barry Cruz, Athena Papadotis, and Family Care, um, who will no longer be on the committee. And I, it's been an absolute pleasure getting to know you and being able to hear from you uh, over the past couple of years while I've been on there. Um, but I also want to take the moment to um, point out that 
21 expressions of interest were received for this committee, which is massive. It's a huge amount of people putting up their hand to be a part of this. Um, of that 21 people, there have been 12 that have uh, 12 community members and service provider representatives being appointed to the DAC, and congratulations to all of those community members. I will take the opportunity to read them all out. Uh, community representatives are going to be Cody Bothwell, Michael Dan, Ivan Etzebeth, Simon Humphrey, Peter O'Connor, Melinda Piggott, Lucy Sullivan, Sarah Tate, and Dean Walton. And we will also have the service providers REAC, Rights Information and Advocacy Centre, <coughs> Granny Road School, and Everyday Independence. Um, they're all going to be joining the DAC, and I'm so excited to work with you and hear from you over the next um, how long have I appointed for? The next three years, um, but the next year that I'll be on there at the very least. Uh, and I just want to thank everybody, the, all 21 people that put their hand up to be a part of it. And I do hope that the other nine who weren't successful in joining the DAC are in some way able to be involved, that we are able to keep them involved and continue to have their um, import or just harness that enthusiasm in some way because that's so important. So I just want to thank everybody that has served on the DAC, that will now be serving on the DAC, and I'm uh, excited to be at the next meeting with everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Spinks. Councillor Summer, would you like to speak? Thank you, Mayor Sali. I'd just like to echo Councillor Spinks's comments. And such great, so great to see such a strong interest. And somehow we've managed to whittle down 21 applicants into 12. So well done, staff, for that. It would not have been an easy decision. And also service providers, providers, it's great to see them respond as they are experts in this field. No doubt they will make a valuable contribution. I will say that council should utilise this committee at every opportunity, no matter how innocuous, every project needs to be assessed prior to settling on detailed designs. Colours, textures, um, gradients, all those things come into it and it could avoid some costly retrofitting retro or litigation from accidents in the future. So of note from the council plan is that council will promote the use of universal design principles across the regions to make greater Shepparton an accessible tourism hub. Uh, together with this committee, with our new universal access, access grants, we would have embarked on this quest to achieve it. So I look forward to what the committee can come up with and um, watch with interest over the next three years. Quite a commitment, three years. So I wish all the new uh, members well and thank you very much for your previous contributions to the ongoing members and thank you for the members who are retiring. Great. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? Are there any councillors that would like to speak for the motion? No, we will now go to the vote. All those in favour? Carried on opposed. Uh, councillors, before we get to agenda item 10.2, I'm going to go a little bit off track. I forgot to welcome Councillor Dinny Adam to his first uh, council meeting as newly elected uh, councillor. So, uh, sorry, I've seen you here before, so uh, that's why I got used to that. So I, I apologise. So. Uh, we'll get back on track uh, on page 14 of the agenda, item 10.2, which is community matching grants round to 2021-2022. Councillors, there is a motion, uh, there is a recommendation. Can I please have someone put that forward as a motion? May I'd like to move the motion, printed on page 14. Um, it's a little bit long, but I will read it out. That the council note the successful applicants for round two of the 2021-22 community matching grants program as outlined below. Uh, the Shepparton and Croquet Club Incorporated for $2,505. Astronomical Society of Victoria, $1,923. Primary Care Connect, $3,000. Shepparton Regional Re Reconciliation Group, $5,000. The, uh, the Kyla Golf Club for $4,827. And Know Your Rights, Point of Difference, $5,000 for a total of $22,255.74. Thank you, Councillor Adam. Can I please have a Councillor second that motion? Thank you, Councillor Spinks. Councillor Adam, would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, just briefly, thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, this is an ongoing program we've had for many, many years. Uh, we've got $75,000 for this current financial year. And um, look, there's so many valuable organisations out there and there's a lot of interest in these programs. We obviously wish we'd have a lot more money to accommodate all the requests. However, there's a process in place. Uh, these particular organisations were successful on this occasion. I'm sure they're all very worthy. I'm sure the money will be spent and much appreciated. So it's something that we give directly to our community organisation. It's something I, I really support and will continue to promote in the future. Thank you, Councillor Adam. Councillor Spinks, would you like to speak to the motion? Yeah, um, just briefly to uh, highlight, these are um, fabulous projects, a fabulous grant opportunity. Um, I do want to point out all of these programs that have been 
um, funded through this round are all really different, which I really appreciate. Um, they're for things as wide as CCTV, telescopes, a community garden, uh, reconciliation week event, mm. spray units and weaving circles. I mean, they are anything you can think of is what, you know, can fit within these matching, grant, matching grants. And um, while six applicants were assessed uh, and were awarded, unfortunately two were unsuccessful, but they still are great projects and I um, hope that they they just didn't fit within this particular grant and so I hope that they will still go ahead in some form or some different pathway uh, and be supported to do so. So the Seventh Creek Community Decals um, and the Dinner Dance as well. Uh, and I just want to congratulate everyone that applied um, to see 22 grand of the 35 available from this round, it's split into two. Um, is a great take up. There is still a bit of room though. So, you know, if you're out there with a group wanting to do something, I highly encourage you to reach out and, um, and apply. And I will take the opportunity to spruik that there is a um, Zoom information centre on community grants tomorrow night at 6pm and you can register online. So if anyone out there is watching and knows that has a community group that would like to apply for a grant, Council is running a Zoom session where you can learn more about it and hopefully we'll see you in the next round of applicants uh, in the 2022-2023 rounds. Thank you, Councillor Spinks. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? Are there any councillors that would like to speak for the motion? Councillor Summer. Thank you, Mayor Sally. These are quite large amounts, potentially of up to $5,000. Um, the grants used to be up to councillors to approve, but now it's done under delegation. So the only comments I'll make here, and I have said this before, is that I like to see both the in-kind and the monetary contributions towards these things so that we can check if it's matching, um, it gives future applicants a guide to how they might like to um, model their project in the future, makes the process more transparent. And um, even though these are all worthy projects, potentially we could flag capacity to pay as a further consideration when reviewing the terms of reference. This is meant, I mean, $75,000 in total community grant contribution is not a small amount and council should ensure we deliver the best bang for buck with ratepayer money. They're community grants, so we need to make sure that they're going to places that um, are using it to do something that they may not have done had we not assisted them. Great. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? Are there any other councillors that would like to speak for the motion? No. We will now go to the vote. All those in favour? <coughs> motion carried and opposed. Councillors, we now go to agenda item 10.3 on page 18 of the agenda. Small Town Festive Decorations Grant tw uh, yeah, 2022. Uh, there is a recommendation. Can I please have a councillor put that forward as a motion? Thank you, Councillor Summer. Thank you, Mayor Sally. I'm happy to move that the Council note the successful applicants awarded funding under delegated authority for the 2022 Small Town Festive Decorations Grant Program as follows, and just as it reads on page 18 for that one. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Other, uh, can I please have a Councillor second that motion? Councillor Brophy. Councillor Summer, would you Ms. like? Thank you. Um, Councillor Summer, would you like to speak to the motion? Thank you, Mayor Sally. It's just great to see these small towns getting involved in festive decorations. It's, it would take a lot of resources for Council to go out to each small town and um, apply what we think they would need to their decor, whereas if the small towns take ownership of this, which is what these grants are intended to do, they each have a unique feel for their town and a unique understanding of their residents and they can better reflect what their residents would like to see in terms of festive grants. So that's just our little contribution that enables small towns to take the lead on their own unique character at, during the festive season. Great. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Councillor Brophy, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, yeah, thank you, Mayor Sally. Just on the back of what Councillor uh, Summers said, uh, how great it is that we can actually spread this around to the, the small towns. And each of the, the proponents who have put up uh, for this particular funding, we've had association with probably over the last 12 months, uh, you know, being the Tatura Community Planning Group, uh, Katandra West Recreation Reserve, 
um, fantastic Marupna and Tally Garupna men shared, and of course the Lions Club of uh, Talamba. And that's just on the back of the, the the previous item that we had, which was spread around as well because of the uh, um, you know the Kyala Golf Club, the point of difference. It's so great to see so many organisations, uh, be it service organisations, be it um, uh, men sheds, uh, or be it the you know, believe it or not the Astronomical Society of Victoria, the Shepparton Branch to see the sort of funding going around to all of these uh, smaller groups that really need this funding to be able to uh, put on either their festive decorations or whether it be their community match congress. Wonderful to see and um, uh, wholeheartedly support this. Thank you, Councillor Brophy. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? All right. Are there any councillors that would like to speak for the motion? Councillor Spink. Thank you, just really briefly. I just want to also thank um, uh, the um, one application that was uh, withdrawn because it just was it didn't fit within the um, festive time line of this particular grant. But I want to thank um, the Turkish Islamic Cultural Center and Mosque um, who proposed a celebration um, uh, celebrating Ramadan. Um, and even though it didn't fit within this grant scope, I think it is important that we are still talking about how we can um, celebrate all of the festivities more celebration is always going to be a good thing. And it's about how all the people that live within our community can celebrate the festivities that are important to them. And Christmas is never going away. That is always going to be an incredible celebration um, at the end of the year. But there are so many other times through the year that I wonder if we could expand this scope um, to include and to celebrate. So just making a note of that. Thank you. All right, thank you, Councillor Spinks. Are there any councillors that would like to speak to the motion? No, we will now go to the vote. All those in favour? I should carry it on opposed. Councillors, we now go to page 22 of the agenda, item 10.4, Membership Appointment Positive Ageing Advisory Committee 2022 to 2025. There's, there is a recommendation. Can I please have a councillor put that forward as a motion? Councillor Dobson. Oh, thank you, Mayor. Sally, I'll move that the council appoint the following community reps and service providers to the Positive Ageing Advisory Committee for a term of three years, commencing 20 July 2022 and concluding on 18 July 2025. And there is a list of 11, and I'll go through that in a moment. And number two, acknowledge and thank the outgoing community representatives and service providers for their contribution to the PAAC. Thank you, Councillor Dobson. Can I please have a councillor second that motion? Councillor Brophy. Yep, Morris. Um, Councillor Dobson, would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, thank you. Uh, I don't know whether it's appropriate that I speak to this motion, but uh, being <laughs> such a young fellow that I am, but I will continue on. Um, the last, uh, the term of the last group of uh, PAAC members concluded on the 10th of January, and we did a six-week uh, advertising campaign, uh, concluding uh, with um, there were 11 applications received, <coughs> nine from community members and two from service providers. And the terms of reference states that a maximum of nine community reps and two service providers are able to be appointed. And um, what I'd like to do is just uh, uh, outline what the report suggests. And it, the, the, the uh, advisory committee uh, provide a platform for representation of the ageing community to discuss and provide advice to Greater Shepparton City Council on opportunities and challenges relating to positive ageing within Greater Shepparton. And we all know that the community Australia-wide are ageing, uh, and uh, it's very important that people who traditionally would have, um, I suppose, retired at 65 years of age, many are now still working, and those uh, with a bit of go in them are still going on even to the age of late 70s. So uh, there's, there's opportunities there for everybody, and I'd like to congratulate and thank the following people who have put their hand up and were successful. Uh, Chris Burgess, Mary Code, Alberto de Simone, uh, Gary Gray, Jeff Maynard, Cynthia Gorey, Jeanette Doherty, John Lilly, and Simon Wyatt were all community representatives and we do thank them. And they are going to be joined by the Golden Valley University of the Third Age, <coughs> which is a very big operation here in, in Shepparton and right throughout the Golden Valley and right throughout Victoria. And also Rumble our Aboriginal, Aboriginal Cooperative uh, as a service provider, and I congratulate and thank uh, Rumbalar for having representation on this very important uh, top uh, advisory committee. We all know that uh, Rumbalara do run a, a very successful uh, 
aged care uh, service um, in Shepparton, providing accommodation both as independent living and also for for not for those who need help. And uh, it's very important that everybody gets involved. The term of the current members conclude on uh, 10th of June 2022, as I just said, and um, um, uh, the new the new advisory committee will be uh, put in place as of today. Uh, I'd like to thank them. And also, before I finish, I'd like to thank uh, Thurley Pierce, Veronica Dow and Tony Bell, who are three community representatives who have retired from their position, as well as Vincent Care Hume Community Hub, who retires as a service provider. Thank Great. you, Mr. Yep. Thank you, Councillor Dobson. Councillor Brophy, would you like to speak to the motion? Look, uh, thank you, Mayor Sally. Uh, Councillor Dobson really did sum that up very well. This is a three-year term, and what community representatives that we have here, um, I know the likes and the passion of people such as Mary Coe, Gary Gray, uh, Jeff Maynard, uh, Cynthia Gorey, and Jeanette um, Doherty, just to name a few, and, and not excluding the others, but they are top-shelf advisors uh, in this area, top-shelf advisors and passionate community members, and bringing that in uh, with, uh, as Councillor Dobson said, with uh, the Golden Valley uh, University of the Third Age and also Rumbalara, uh, what a great group that would be uh, to, to be a council representative on because uh, such passionate people, and I'm, I'm sure that they will move on further you know, with their membership of, of what they've, they want to achieve in the Positive Ageing Advisory Committee space. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Councillor Brophy. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? Are there any councillors that would like to speak for the motion? Right, we'll now go to the vote. All those in favour? Motion carried on opposed. Councillors, we now go to page 27 of the agenda, item 10.5, Women's Charter Advisory Committee Terms of Reference and Action Plan. There is a recommendation. Can I please have a councillor put that forward as a motion? Councillor Spinks. Thank you, Mayor Sally. Um, I would like to move the recommendation to a motion that the Council, one, adopt the amended terms of reference for the Greater Shepparton Women's Charter Advisory Committee as attached to this report, and two, note the Greater Shepparton Women's Charter Advisory Committee Action Plan 2022 to 2025 as attached to this report. Great. Thank you, Councillor Spinks. Can I please have a Councillor second that motion? I'll second the motion, Mr Mayor. Yeah, Councillor Dem. Councillor Spinks, would you like to speak for the motion? Uh, thank you. Yes, I will. Um, I, I'll just, okay, I'm, <laughs> as the council rep sitting on the um, Women's Charter, over the last few months we've been working really hard on um, these changes and on um, streamlining the way that we do work on the committee. We have really passionate committee members um, who really want to make change and make an impact in the world and um, by amending the terms of reference um, and this new action plan, we're able to really um, streamline the way that we do that and support the way that we do that. So I'm excited to see these come to the council meeting. We've been working on them for quite a long time. Uh, the key changes to the terms of reference is that the charter champion has been reinstated um, and will be the nominated councillor representative. Uh, and this is in line with the um, uh, charter advisor, Women's Charter Advisory Committee's across Victoria. Um, this is a state gov initiative that we are a part of, um, so it's consistent with that. Uh, as well, the Charter Champion has also been instated as the committee chairperson, which is in line with a number of our committees and the way that things go. Um, further, the terms of reference language and formatting has been simplified to enhance accessibility and inclusion. And there is also an inclusion of a statement in the terms of reference about applying an intersectionality lens in the context of recruitment and appointment of committee members in order to reflect the diversity of the local community, which is really essential because when it comes to um, there is no one version of a woman um, or what it means to be a woman. So making sure that we are including every version of that is incredibly important. Um, so I'm very excited to see the changes in the terms of reference. Uh, though they may seem small, they are important. And for the action plan, um, the crux of it says that the three main themes are gender equity, encouraging diversity and representation and participation, and women's active citizenship, and about how we respond, support, and grow each of those. So it's very um, 
simple, which gives us the flexibility to do whatever it is we need to do that makes sense for the women of our community. So both of these are um, basic documents that support the Greater, uh, Women, Greater Shepparton Women's Charter Advisory Committee, it's such a long name, but um, are very important. So I'm very glad they've come to today's meeting and uh, very happy to support them. Thank you. Great, thank you, Councillor Spinks. Councillor Adam, would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I don't think I can add too much more detail to that. I think Councillor Spinks covered it extremely well. I just wish to say that this organisation has been going for about 11 years now, and um, we've really evolved into a, uh, a rather impactful group of people. I, I seconded the motion only because I've got a bit of a personal interest. I was the first charter champion, actually, back in, first male charter champion, obviously. Um, well, maybe that's not so obvious, but it is. Uh, in any case, it's a great, uh, great organisation. I've seen them move forward in leaps and bounds, and what they're doing today as part of a, a state group as well, as Councillor Spence explained, I think is a natural um, evolution of such a good group of people. Well, they've held different events over the years. They've um, yeah, lifted the profile, I think, of gen gender equity in this town and this region, so yeah, more power to them. Great, thank you, Councillor Adam. Uh, are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? No, any councillors that would like to speak for the motion? Now go to the vote. All those in favour? Motion carried and opposed. Go to page 30 of the agenda, item 11.1, .1, media policy. There is a recommendation. Can I please have a councillor put that forward as a motion? Councillor Dobson. I move that the council adopt the updated media policy as it comes to the report. Thank you. Can I please have a councillor second that? Councillor Summer. Did you want to say what you were seconding? I'll second that motion. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Dobson, would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, thank you, Ms. Darby. The crux of the matter is that the media policy ensures that communications between council and media is managed appropriately to maximise the benefits to council and minimise the risk of adverse publicity and misunderstanding due to inaccurate information or inappropriate sharing on information. I think those last couple of points are very important. That we are a public, uh, we are a public organisation. Uh, we need to respond to the community, and we and it is it is our duty, obviously, to provide accurate and timely information uh, via the media. Uh, in this day and age, when you've got uh, uh, social media the way it is, uh, adverse uh, information can get out very quickly. And what could be a bit of a thought bubble in somebody's mind could very easily become a tidal wave of misinformation throughout the community. So it's very important that the council has a policy that, uh, that is uh, clear and, uh, and, and can be followed very well. Uh, the media policy details roles and responsibilities, uh, commenting in the media or the media spokesman, media releases, interviews, briefings, and non-news human uh, interest stories. Um, and it's very important, as we know, that the mayor uh, is the main spokesperson for the council, but uh, uh, he has indicated, and I, pr I appreciate that, he has indicated that other councillors uh, can can comment in an area that they feel is appropriate themselves. And I think that gives responsibility to all the councillors and, of course, to the management of the Greater Shepparton Council in providing accurate and timely information throughout the community. So with those few points, um, the media policy, this is just an updating, taking into consideration <coughs> the modern, uh, you know, what's happening in today, the modern standards, the modern styles, and it's about informing the public about activities and programs and events and services that are important to the council. Finally, um, I thought that the council did an excellent job in providing uh, information about uh, the, the two major events that we've just had, the White Night, for example, that was terrific. And the information that got out of the community allowed us to have, I think, upwards of 19,000 odd people I hear it was, was, was the uh, amount of people around. So with good communication, we can get our story out. Even the stories sometimes that are hard to swallow, uh, we've got to get those stories out in the community. Great. Thank you, Councillor Dobson. Councillor Summer, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, thank you, Mayor Sali. I reiterate what Councillor Dobson has said. Uh, basically, the way I read this policy is that 
it sets out that the mayor's the spokesperson, but it doesn't prevent individual councillors being contacted or making comment on specific issues. Um, media don't contact us as much these days. It seems to be happening less and less, where, but so long as we make it clear that it's just our personal opinion, um, we shouldn't be media averse at all. Um, I totally respect that the mayor is the spokesperson, but there are nine of us and each councillor contributes towards the debate in different ways. We've all been voted in by different people. We represent different things. And um, that contribution doesn't necessarily start and end just during the ordinary meeting debate. So it's important that the public do have an understanding, understanding of who they are voting for. And that can be made clear in media reports, in social media, in just speaking to us. But the rule of thumb is that the mayor knows what he's talking about and everybody else has an opinion. But um, do we really need this policy? Um, Probably not, but uh, it has been in place for a while now. I don't see any glaring red flags to make me vote against it. If we did have a mind not to go down the path of having a media policy where we can just follow our code of conduct and make these decisions oursel ourselves based on our autonomous opinion as elected representatives, not staff, I'd be happy to um, consider that. But at the moment, I think it's, it's fine. I'll be happy to support the media policy. Right. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? Councillor Brophy. Uh, thank you, Mayor Sally. Um, reiterating a little bit what uh, Councillor Summer just mentioned there, that um, when I looked at it, I thought, do, you, do we really need this policy? Implementation of a policy is normally if things are just not running correctly or if they need definition in and around it. It is all encompassing uh, across council council staff, councillors, and the subsidiaries to council as well. But when I look at it, you know, we've already got within the councillor code of conduct, the staff code of conduct, and also the mayor and the deputy mayor role and responsibilities as to who speak, who is the spokesperson, etc. Therefore, the components uh, that are there, and, and they can be implemented within the current codes or the policies anyway. I mean, media outlets know the protocols and they respect this as they go through all of that as well. I mean, I just uh, having a policy for the sake of having a policy, you know, like next month, do we have a policy uh, to define the implementation of policies? I mean, I just sort of look at it and think, well, hang on. Uh, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not against it per se. I will vote against it, but I, I'm not against it in the sense of, of what it's about to, trying to achieve, but I just don't think it's necessary. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Brophy. Are there any councillors that would like to speak for the motion? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Adam. I think we should really note this is a media policy. It's about engagement with the media. This in no way inhibits councillors, as Councillor Summer said, in talking to the general public about their issues, even with the media, providing they clearly state it is their personal opinion and they're not speaking on behalf of the council. So I don't see this as being a, an issue at all. But yes, uh, official uh, relaying official uh, policies and opinions of council resolutions must be done through the mayor to keep that stability. Otherwise, you can imagine nine councillors all giving their opinions to the media, not just opinions, but that would be um, misconstrued by the public as being a council position. So I fully support it because I don't think it inhibits councillors' own individuality at all. Yep, no worries. Thank you, Councillor Adam. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? Are there any councillors that would like to speak for the motion? Councillor Spinks. Yes, thank you, Mayor Sali. Um, just to broaden um, the narrative a little bit further, so far we've heard a lot about um, how it impacts councillors and ultimately I'm not too concerned about um, how councillors uh, operate in terms of this policy because as always we're guided by the Act and by our Code of Conduct. But the other part about um, this particular policy is it also guides how council staff, the CEO, the directors and the um, council staff throughout the organisation interact with the media and that's important as well. That's what I really focus on with this policy around the guidance it provides uh, for council as a whole about the way that council presents to the public and to the media. Um, and that's important. Most organisations would have a media policy. Um, it talks about um, how anybody who is representing council um, conducts themselves, and and this is what that media, this is what this policy is all about for me. Um, the media policy outlines the way that anybody involved with council represents themselves, represents council, and how they interact with the media. So for that reason, I'm very 
supportive of this policy. Again, not overly concerned about councillors. We're very um, we're guided by all the different things that keep us in place and the way that we interact. But this is bigger than just that conversation. So I'm happy to support it today. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Spinks. Are there any councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Before I go to Councillor Dobson's right of reply, we'll just uh, speak to the motion and highlight what um, those in favour have mentioned that, um, you know, this gives a bit of a guiding direction to all of us and especially myself, which I've been experiencing over the last five weeks, how everything effectively does come through the Mayor for for public comment, but I have highlighted, and I'm glad Councillor Dobson mentioned that I want our councillors to be as active as they possibly can in their space and speak passionately about the things that they're concerned about and let the community know that they have a voice as well. And, and that is already seen, um, uh, being rolled out through our media releases <clears throat> that are relevant to your committees and other thoughts as well. So uh, this just keeps things uh, as straight as it possibly can, and um, I'm in favour of it. But I will now go to Councillor Dobson's right of reply. Thank you, Mayor Sally. The two words that stick out with me, and that's guidance and direction. We've got an operation here that has, um, I don't know how many employees, uh, there's quite a, a few hundred of them, as well as management, as well as councillors. And uh, no matter whether it's a council or it's a public company, and that's basically what we are, you'll find that most public companies, if not all, have a policy, uh, a media policy, in order to give guidance and direction to those who are fronting the media, in whatever circumstances it may be. And part of that, of course, is to, is to provide training on, on, on how to uh, go to the media. I mean, the media are looking for information, and, 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 uh, and, uh, and if you're speaking on behalf of the council, um, you've got to give succinct and straightforward information and that information that can be digested uh, by the community. So it provides a framework around ro roles and responsibilities, and that's the in interesting point. It, it, it forms a, a framework. It doesn't tell you what you've got to say, it just gives you a framework about what you've got to do. And as much as I normally would agree with uh, Councillor Brophy, he's a very wise man, in this instance, uh, Mayor Sally, I'm afraid we're at odds. Good to have a point of difference. Uh, thank you, Councillor Dobson. Councillors, we will now go to the vote. All those in favour? Those against? Motion carried. Councillors, we now go to page 33 of the agenda, item 11.2, contracts awarded. Under the delegation, June 2022, there is a recommendation. Can I please have a councillor put that forward as a motion? Councillor James. Thank you, Mayor Sully. I'd like to move the recommendation 11.2, contracts awarded under delegation, um, June 2022, on page 33, and I'll read out the recommendation. That the Council, one, note the contracts awarded under delegation pursuant to formal tender process for the reporting period, and two, note the request for, tenders, for tender advertised but not yet awarded. Thank you, Councillor James. Can I please have a Councillor second that motion? Thank you, Councillor Spinks. Do you mind doing this? Acknowledge what you're uh, Yeah, I'll second that, Mayor Sally. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Spinks. Councillor James, would you like to speak to the motion? Thank you, Mayor Sally. Um, there is one contract awarded under the delegated authority by the Chief Executive Officer and Director or Manager. This is uh, construction of Murchison Rail um, Trail Bridge, um, Stage 1 upgrade. Um, and that's been awarded to Warrant, Waratah Constructions Proprietary Limited. The second part of that recommendation, uh, Mayor Sally, is that there are six requests for tenders advertised, but not yet awarded. These include, out of these six tenders, these include the cleaning uh, tender for the SAM building, uh, and also for the SAM precinct in regards to barbecue, nature and playgrounds. Um, the installation of bud lighting in Shepparton and Tatura, uh, so very good to see that bud lighting around town. It so um, just invigorates our communities. Um, nice to see Tatura have been uh, our in receipt of that bud lighting. Telegram and Children Centre upgrade and also the provision of tree services and tree planting. Ms. Ali. Great. Thank you, Councillor James. Councillor Spinks, would you like to speak to the motion? No, thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? No. Any councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Councillor Brophy. Uh, thank you, Mayor Sally. Just very briefly, um, Councillor James is absolutely right. The invigoration of the, uh, the, the bud lighting, and of course, this is uh, now under evaluation 
for the next tender, um, both Shepparton and, and um, of course, into Tura, which is terrific. And they look great. They look fantastic. And I guess as long as they are either solid or they've got, they're using green energy generated, given the fact we've declared a climate change emergency, um, walk into a town and, and you see it all lit up and it looks fantastic you want to know that we're doing the right thing from a responsible side of things as well so uh, this is fantastic really really good thank you thank you councillor brophy are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion no we will now go to the vote all those in favor motion carried and opposed councillors we now go to page 36 of the agenda item 11.3 audit and risk management committee unconfirmed minutes 11th may 2022 there is a recommendation can i please have a councillor put that forward as a motion councillor summer thank you miss Ellie. i'm happy to move that the council note one the unconfirmed minutes of the 11th of may 2022 audit and risk management committee meeting as attached to this report and two the minutes will be confirmed by the Audit and Risk Management Committee at their next meeting scheduled for the 10th of August 2022 and any substantive changes to the unconfirmed minutes will be reported at the to the next council meeting. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Can I please have a Councillor second that motion? I'll second the motion uh, that the Council note at uh, points one and two. Thank you, Councillor Dobson. Councillor Summer, would you like to speak to the motion? Thank you, Mayor Sali. Just, uh, it's terrific getting these regularly. These minutes from the Audit and Risk Management Committee are quite detailed. They go into areas that don't necessarily reach councillors since we're at um, such a high level and they get more into the detail. So um, it's a useful resource for us as well as for the public just to see how we um, operate. It's a great tool in transparency and it potentially flags issues that we may not actually get on our radar. So I enjoy reading this. I think it's a great snapshot of how we're going as an organisation. Very good. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Councillor Dobson, would you like to speak to the motion? Thank you, Mayor Sally. Audit and risk committees are an integral part of local government, no matter where you are in Victoria, and they do provide an independent insight as to some of the, as just been noted, some of the matters, even operational matters and uh, outstanding matters, um, for example, um, uh, anything to do with finance, etc. Um, we have, a, a, we've, over the years, we've had a very high level of committee members on the on this committee, and uh, they are community members, nothing to do with the council, and it's it's very comforting as a council to know that somebody independently is giving us oversight, not only to what the councillors are doing, but what the management of the council are doing as well. And so um, I, I think all in all, uh, they do a very good job. Not only that, but we've got Vega as well, the Victorian Auditor General who goes over all our, all our figures, etc. So we are quite well audited, looked at, investigated by a number of outside and independent bodies and the Audit and Risk Management Committee are one that does a very good job. Thank you, Councillor Dobson. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? Are there any councillors that would like to speak for the motion? No, we'll now go to the vote. All those in favour? Motion carried on approved. Councillors, we now go to page 39 of the agenda item 12.1, request for park naming in North Quarter Estate. There is a recommendation. Can I please have a councillor put that forward as a motion? Councillor James. Thank you, Mayor Sally. I'd like to move the recommendation 12.1 on page 39, request for park naming in North Quarter Estate. Um, and the recommendation reads that the council approve the naming of Roche Park in the North Quarter Estate in line with naming rules for place, places Victoria 2016. Thank you, Councillor James. Can I please have a councillor second that motion? I'll second the motion. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Dem. Councillor James, would you like to speak to the motion? Thank you, Mayor Sully. Um, the name has been uh, assessed and in accordance with the naming rules for places in Victoria 2016. The naming rules uphold the guidelines provided for the Geographic Place uh, Names Act 1998. They are mandatory for naming authorities in Victoria. On the 4th of January 2022, Spire, um, on behalf of the developer, wrote to Council requesting to name the reserve within the North Quarter Estate at 145 Verney Road, Shepparton. Parish plans show that the Roche family uh, previously occupied the land 
uh, and the developers would like to retain the history within the subdivision. The name was assessed and in accordance with the naming rules for places in Victoria 2016. The name is assessed under various principles, including, but not limited to, no duplication of name within a 15k radius, uh, <laughs> of similar sounding or spelling to any other features within 15 kilometre radius, uh, not to be offensive or derogatory, uh, no business commercial link to the name. Uh, and finally, as per the naming rules for the places in Victoria 2016, the council is required to place uh, the proposed name of Roche Park on the public notice uh, by way of ad advertisement in the local newspaper. The notice period is for 30 days, after which, uh, if no submissions are received, the name is then approved for use by way of formal council resolution and then gazetted by the geographic names of Victoria. The park name was placed uh, in on public notice and no submissions were received. Thank you, Mayor. Great. Thank you, Councillor James. Councillor Dem, would you like to speak to the motion? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? Are there any councillors that would like to speak for the motion? We will now go to the vote. All those in favour? Motion carried and opposed. Councillors, we now go to page 43 of the agenda, item 12.2, International Engagement Strategy. There is a recommendation. Can I please have a councillor put that forward as a motion? Councillor Dobson. Thank you, Mayor Sally. I'll move that the council endorse the revised International Engagement Strategy as attached to this report. Thank you, Councillor Dobson. Can I please have a councillor second that motion? I second the motion, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Adam. Councillor Dobson, would you like to speak to the motion? It's interesting that both the mover and the second have both been mayors of this uh, organisation and both have uh, been included in overseas trade delegations. And, uh, and we've both probably seen, from a personal point of view, the strength that it is. And I also note that just locally, our new mayor has been actively engaged in the uh, Arab, uh, uh, Australia Arab Chamber of Commerce and Industry uh, function at the Park Lake not so long ago. And again, um, he, um, uh, it, it, that's starting to open up uh, ideas and, uh, and plans for the future. There are five um, feature uh, themes uh, to this strategy, and I think it's important that we highlight what they are because they go straight to the crux of the matter. First of all, a strategy is of support. Uh, support greater shepherded businesses, and I think that's important through education and training, mentoring, funding opportunities, business visits, and participation in trade shows, which I think we do very well. And I'd like to compliment uh, Geraldine Christo and her group of uh, management people who are doing that very well. Uh, the second one is uh, uh, the second one is to foster and, and strengthen internal relationships through businesses. The, uh, the, the strategy seeks to identify businesses that are investment or export ready and to assist increasing their level of knowledge and trade facilities. And being a, a primary producer of some note uh, throughout the Golden Valley, it is important that Greater Shepparton takes advantage uh, of, of that opportunity and Council is in a prime position to help out. Uh, the third uh, point I'd make is the uh, promotion of Shepparton or the region as investment ready. And we have been, I think we've been really, uh, we've really been running on top of the ground in terms of, of, of uh, promotional uh, uh, opportunities right throughout the years that, that I've lived in Shepparton, that's quite some time. And uh, we've got to keep doing that for our export of our fresh, healthy produce. Uh, the, one of the important issues around uh, a place like Shepparton is visitation. And now we've got uh, increased uh, uh, train services. It means the access from, say, Melbourne and what have you is much easier. And of course, that will help increase visitation from overseas. And with all our, uh, all our migrant families, the refugee families that have made Shepherd in their home, it just means that visitation becomes all the more important, family reunions, etc. And I think Shepherd should be proud, and the whole Golden Valley should be proud of the way in which we've embraced uh, people from overseas and from those people who have come from war-torn countries. And the, vi and the visitation area is very important. And that's why uh, I'm glad it's in involved in this strategy. And the last one is that we have um, friendship uh, a status with 12 cities right throughout, Australia, right throughout the world uh, from, if I might, just, just, just a minute. Yeah. Um, our sister cities are, are in Greece and Albania and China and America, Japan, 
Macedonia, Yugoslavia, England, China, uh, both in another one in China, Japan, and two more in China and the Philippines. So we're spreading our wings, and it's good to see that the majority of it is in the Pacific region. I think that's where we're going to have the, our, our best opportunity for increased trade. So international engagement, we're not alone in this world, and uh, it's very important that this community embraces the opportunity to, uh, uh, to trade throughout the world. Great. Thank you, Councillor Dobson. Councillor Adam, would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I think Jeff covered it pretty well, actually. I don't want to repeat all the same points that Jeff just did. But just as a bit of an overview, this was adopted in 2017 originally. Um, prior to that, I think it was a little bit hit and miss uh, in regard to uh, us getting engaging in uh, overseas issues internationally. And also we have a lot of visitors to our region and we didn't have anything in place, no funds, no real protocols established on how to um, greet and meet these people. So we decided to implement this plan. I think it's been great. It's no doubt evolving, but those key points, as Jeff pointed out, business was the number one, I think, interest at the time. But not just that, our diverse community in Greater Shepherd. We've got people from, I can't even name it, how many countries. So as a community responsibility, we also have to engage with a lot of these uh, places that where these people have come from. Uh, from that evolves visitation, obviously, and that's improved tremendously. The business advantages, um, Without getting into detail, I was part of one of the first trips in China that we went to, and um, I won't say that our input there directly helped uh, establish some uh, export markets into China, but I reckon it certainly had an impact. Um, but those things can never be measured completely and correctly. However, for the small amount of money that we are devoting to this, and I still think the small amount, I think the value that we're getting is uh, tenfold. So yep. I really support this and I hope that it actually grows into something even more complex than it currently is. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Councillor Adam. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? No. Are there any councillors that would like to speak for the motion? Councillor Summer. Uh, thank you, Mayor Sally. This can be a controversial strategy in the community that we, it's often difficult to quantify the results we get when we go and do these things. Um, but we need to be able to justify to the community that it isn't just a junket, it is actually a business trip to try and uh, generate some wealth for this region. So we may or may not uh, respond to the global unrest that seems to be escalating to the, um, we've already responded to the pandemic that we've had in terms of lockdowns and safety overseas. It is quite a fluid policy in that way. Um, the reality is that we do need to do this. And as Councillor Adam said, it, it's not a lot of money. I mean, exports are the backbone of this economy in Greater Shepparton, and we need to support the growers and, the, and all the people who employ people that flows down to every one of us. So for a small amount of effort and a small amount of money, we can really capitalise on what people are already doing well so I'm more than willing to continue to support this strategy. And I remember Councillor Adam was quite um, instrumental in actually creating this policy. It'd be nice to actually expand it a bit so that we can get more clarity around how our sister cities, um, how we interact and in what capacity do we interact with our sister cities because um, there has been instances where visitations hasn't been supported by Greater Ships, Turpin and City Council and I'd like to see that embedded in a policy so that every opportunity to make contact and connect with the networks we have overseas is um, used. Great. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Are there any other councillors that would like to speak against the motion? Are there any councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Councillor Spinks. Thank you. Just really briefly. Um, I will be the first to admit that this is not my wheelhouse. And so I couldn't help but ask um, in the briefings that uh, in terms of roads, rates, rubbish, this feels like it sits a long way away from that. Um, and so I had to ask, why is it that council does this work? Um, why does it sit with us? And I was very comforted by the response that there's no one else who does. And I'm a big believer that council should deliver the services that uh, no one else does within our community. Um, and. So just for anybody out there who might be listening to this conversation and thinking, how far is this from core business? It's still within the realm of what we need to do to support our communities. And um, as someone who 
is so far removed from this sort of work, I am very comforted by the fact that we do it and we do it really well. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Councillor Spinks. Are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Now, before we go to the vote, I'll just make a few comments and it's very easy to speak last on the back of Councillor Dobson, Summer, Adam and Spinks and highlight how important this uh, strategy is and I experienced it from a low level at a national space uh, in Brisbane not too long ago and having council representation there, we know we do it well from a local, we know we can do it well from a national, but having it there from an international perspective is vitally important. We have to continue to show that we back our industries, our big producers and as well the other aspects of encouraging visitation here as well. So you've got to invest, it's a small investment when we do do it and I think it provides a significant return and it showcases that we're genuine about representation. So. Without further ado, we will now go to the vote. All those in favour? Motion carried down opposed. <coughs> Council, we now go to page 47 of the agenda, item 13.1, curbside transition planning. Uh, there is a recommendation. Can I please have a councillor put that forward as a motion? Thank you, councillor Brophy. Thank you, Mayor Sarley. Um, 13.1, curbside transition planning. The recommendation is that the council, one, note the community consultation report as attached, and two, endorse the following changes to the curbside collection service to be implemented in a multi-staged approach by no later than March 2024. 2.1, collection of the frequency of the red lead bin, the residential, uh, reduced to fortnightly. 2.2, collection frequency of the green lead bin, to be increased to weekly, and 2.3, introduction of glass bin to be collected monthly. I'd like to add point three, which I'll read out. Point three being provide a detailed report to be presented to council no later than December 2022 ordinary council meeting, which sets out the implementation and rollout process, highlighting specifics on the incremental transition and to include aspects on the education of recycling and the new transition, the marketing process and the monitoring of the implementation. Thank you, Councillor Brophy. Can I please have a Councillor second that motion? Councillor Spinks. I second that motion. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> no worries. I can learn. <laughs> uh, Councillor Brophy, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, thank you, Mayor Sarley. Uh, any change can come with ch challenges, and this will be one as well. But waste, with waste, it's everyone's business and it's everyone's responsibility. This is a multifaceted transition. We have a mandate from the Victorian government to put this, this into place, and we have it by a certain date. We could hold it off or we could get on with it and move it forward. Part of that is obviously the four, four bin system, also the container deposit scheme. And our audit has found that we are not optimising the bin system that we have. And other councils are doing it far more efficiently and better than what we have. We have to lift our game here. And I just read through as well that the, in regards to the audit, the curbside bin audit found that residential waste, uh, waste bins, that's being the regular ones, have around 70% contamination rate. And 53% of that contamination is of organic materials. In other words, we're not putting it into the right bins. By changing the frequency between the red and the green bins, council officers are expecting that a significant portion of the organic material will be recovered and diverted from landfill. This will play a, cru a critical role in council achieving the state, as I said, mandatory, the state uh, target of 80% landfill waste diversion by 2030. It's about the bin size, it's about the frequency of, the, of that, but it's also very much about the education. You know, what goes in what bin? What are we doing uh, you know, regarding this particular transition? Is it cost effective for council? Is it cost effective for our ratepayers? Hence, this is why uh, this report I have asked for will provide the tangible blueprint of the implementation, the rollout, specifically where and when, what education, <laughs> promotion, and marketing is built around it. This is everybody's responsibility and let's get on to make it a better outcome than what we currently have now at the moment. Thank you. 
Thank you, Councillor Brophy. Councillor Spinks, would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, thank you, Mayor Sarley. Um, and apologies, Councillor Brophy, I'm probably going to repeat a lot of what you said, but um, this is how it makes sense in my head and I want to take the opportunity to say it all. Um, so let's dive right in. I support introducing the glass bin and switching the red and green bin frequency. In response to state government's circular economy targets, all Victorian councils are making changes to their waste collection. They either have or they are or they will. But more than that, it's something that makes sense for Greater Shepparton and our own economic, social and environmental needs. Over the last nine months, and even longer for those of us who sit on waste and recycling groups, we've been presented with data on data on data of why the proposed changes are the smart changes. The information shows that through changing the green bin to weekly and the red bin to fortnightly, we can reduce our waste that goes to landfill from 54% to 80% by 2030. And in real terms, this means we are not only putting 30% less waste into expensive landfill, but are instead recycling or composting that 30% of materials. This has real and almost immediate cost savings to council, to the environment and to the ratepayer. <laughs> and the alternative of maintaining the status quo system does exactly the opposite. As well, introducing a monthly glass bin means we can increase the amount of glass that can be recycled from 45% to a massive 90%. This is because when glass is broken within, broken within a yellow recycling bin, it contaminates the entire bin and cannot be used. But when it is broken in a purple glass bin, it is still a clean product and can be used for many recycled products. And there were many questions about where, what the introduction of the CDS cash deposit scheme program next year will mean for glass quantities. But the CDS and the purple bin serve different yet parallel purposes. Different glass for each, but all collected for clean recycling. And so simply, we need both. Further to this, an audit that was done last year, and I even went and saw it with my own eyes, shows that right now with our current setup, we are not getting the right waste to the right places. Almost 70% of what goes in our red bin should actually be in the yellow bin or green bin, and 53% of that is green waste. The smelly stuff, the icky stuff, is in the wrong bin, and that's what we want to move to the green bin and what we want to pick up weekly. So in principle, this is a clear and strong evidence-based decision. The system was set up, we learnt more information about how we can do better, and so we should change the system to reflect it. Evidence-based decision-making. But we're also talking about human beings, so it was never really going to be simple. Council did a community consultation that received an insanely high number of submissions, truly an incredible display from our community. But I'm going to call out the elephant in the room. Overwhelmingly, the community hated the idea of losing the red bin. But I argue the consult consultation was always going to fail in this area because the reality is we are all human and we do not like change or inconvenience or icky things. And it didn't really ask how community would like us to deal with waste and the increasing costs and impacts it presents. Because the reality is waste doesn't disappear. We just expect someone else to deal with it. But we have to take better responsibility for what we use and what we throw away. We have to be accountable for the resources we take and the way that we dispose of them. We should all be using less, but when we can't, we need to be. Would you like an extension? Yes, please. Granted. We should all be using less, but when we can't, we need to be making sure we give our waste the best chance to be recycled, reused, or composted. Because once it's in the red bin, it's waste. Wasteful, wasted, waste. But the consultation didn't ask that. It just said, do you at your house want things to change and to have to find space for another bin? And who would want that? So it was set up to fail. But all was not lost because it also teased out important concerns that we need to address. Nappies and medical waste and large families are all very relevant and need solutions, which we are already coming up with. And we have almost two years of education and marketing and preparation to get ready for the change. We don't save as much waste or cost by waiting, but we do have time to make it work for our community and that's an important compromise. And so to the community, I say, it's going to be okay. I don't know where my purple bin will fit or how I'll remember which day what bin goes out or what will go in what bin, but that is what we will spend the next two years working on. And for $1.85 each, we can create better outcomes for our economy and for our environment, a small change for big reward. Thank you. Great work. Thank you, Councillor Spinks. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? Councillor Summer. Thank you, Mayor Sally. Um, that was a great summation, by the way. Uh, I get what we're trying to do. Uh, I totally get, I, I get it, but we've taken all this mega data from the audits, averaged it out so that it looks like it's as easy as saying, well, 30% is going here and we want it to go there, so we'll do that and it'll move across. And I think that that's quite a blunt instrument. 
there are so many individual variables per household that have not been considered. Um, so, yeah, each household will respond differently. And after almost 130 comments on a Facebook page, it's clear that not everybody has the same approach. Most of them, to reiterate Councillor Spink's comments, were, I'm okay, thanks, Jack. I don't really want to change my recycling habits. The smelly stuff goes in my red bin, so please pick it up weekly or it's going to be too smelly. Now, that, that's a good start for education because, as said, all the smelly stuff should be going into the green bin. That does tell us that there is an issue that we do need to keep up with education. We may have lapsed somehow in that field, but we do need to get back into educating people and perhaps we wouldn't have required these changes in the first place because people would have been doing the, the um, arguably right thing. And some people we've found um, may not need all those bins and that's a genuine thing. Um, for some people it could be extremely inconveniencing to not have that red bin picked up every week and they could be genuinely inconvenienced, which deviates from our role of rate, roads, rates and rubbish. So we're told there's options of getting bigger bins, they can call council and discuss it with them. But the reality is that people don't necessarily want to do that because contacting council is a barrier. Uh, we know people dump rubbish. We know people, when their bins are full, they like to put the rubbish into any old bin and just chuck it out on the street. That's what I'm concerned about. It's people not doing the right thing. There's always a squeaky wheel who just refuse to cooperate. And that's why I think that people do deserve to have an opt-out <laughs> system. So I just want to foreshadow um, a motion to include consideration of an opt-out system three months following the implementation of these changes. It takes 30 days for people to uh, establish new habits. That is more than enough time for people to sort out whether the system works. It would be a lot harder for people to actually take the bin back for very small mon monetary gains. So it would only be that very small percentage of genuine residents who do not need those bins or refuse <coughs> to use those bins who would, who would take that up. The majority of people will do the right thing and cooperate and we're going to have a great recycling closed loop system. There's just so much in this. There's the bin collections, there's the increased uh, fee in waste as well, even though we have agreed on a zero rate rise, here we are increasing the waste fee. Now, I am tentatively okay with that. It's $1.85 per year per resident. We have, oh, sorry. Would you like an extension? Granted. We've been conservative in raising our waste fees in the past, and um, here we are putting it up, but just a minuscule amount due to offsets. But personally, I'd like to see these increases to things that people actually want and would use, like tip tickets and hard rubbish, which may or may not go against this idea of a circular economy, but if we had better waste sorting facilities at the point of drop off, it wouldn't be such a such an issue and we can reuse all that stuff and create employment. So I have given this matter a lot of thought. Um, I, I can't support it at the moment. I don't think it's going to achieve what what it what it's likely to achieve, but um, it looks like this will pass. Congratulations, Councillor Brophy, because I do like that addition and it might give me and the public more confidence moving forward. But I do have just one question, please, if, even if it's put on notice. I'd like to know if that procurement contract has already been signed. We can take that on notice. Thank you, Mayor Sarley. At all. Uh, which contract is that? The procurement. The one, in, the one listed in the confidential agenda. I can elaborate if you like or... We'll take it on notice. Thank you. That's also, was that it? Yes. Thank you. Are there any councillors that would like to speak for the motion? Councillor Dobson. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor Sarley. Uh, Recycling Victoria aims to disrupt the current waste collection and disposal paradigm by placing emphasis and strengthening the foundations of and toward the creation of a circular economy. And that's the key sentence as far as I'm concerned, that we're in a changing world. Um, and in a changing world, sometimes, uh, not all, sometimes, but all, time, all the time, we need people to take up leadership. Sometimes leadership, you can be proactive and sometimes you can be reactive, depending upon the situation. In terms of changing the paradigm of waste management, this council has got to be proactive. And whilst I acknowledge 
that there will be uh, people with, with problems and we'll have to sort them out. Uh, I believe the long-term future of waste management is most important. I remember being in Coffs Harbour a few years back at a waste management conference where I saw where they had taken glass, um, a, a specifically glass on their own, and turned it into road making material. Now that's the sort of stuff that we're talking about. That's the high level stuff that I hope that this, this policy um, and this procedure will, will, go, will get going forward. Um, it is a difficult, it is a difficult uh, subject. There are many active parts in it, and I take that mm. point. But if we don't get a start, if we don't start doing it now, um, we won't get there. There are some councils who have done more than what we've done, and there are some councils, one in particular in New South Wales, who still throw everything in a big hole out the back of the, you know, in their own old tip. So I believe that we're being correct in what we're doing. I believe that the added uh, point that Councillor Brophy made uh, is, is, is pertinent, that we'll be able to come back and assess and have a look at the whole thing, make sure it's going. And the transition period, I think, will be an important aspect as well. I wholeheartedly support uh, the transition into the red bin, even though myself, uh, I have a little red bin and uh, I, I've got to change it around, but um, uh, I think it's a great idea. Right. Councillor Dobson. Are there any councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Councillor Adam. Yes, yes, thanks, Mr Mayor. Look, I haven't done a lot of research into this. Obviously, I've only just got back on. However, just on the surface, this motion is uh, in response to the government's uh, plan to introduce the purple bin. So we have, I don't know why we're debating whether we should bring that in or not. That's happening. The only issue that we can discuss is the frequency change, potentially. Um, yeah, well, I don't know whether that will work or not, or whether there'll be issues, but I'm sure if there is issues, uh, they'll come to light and we may respond to them as need be. Um, and Councillor Brophy's additional point to the motion, I would like to think the Council would, would be doing that anyway, coming back to us in a period of time with a response and a, a, some sort of accountability uh, document in regard to data. But um, I do support his extra point just to ensure that that will happen, but I would expect that as a standard uh, requirement of the, our organisation. I'm sure they would be doing that anyway. So, in whole, I support the motion as it stands. Right. Thank you, Councillor Adam. Are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Councillor James. Thank you, um, uh, Mayor Sully. I, I initially had um, some thoughts around the red bin and the transition and the pickup from the red bin. Um, I initially thought if there was a possibility of us looking at a six months during the the, um, the daylight saving period where we actually maintain the, the, the bin on a um, maintaining at its current rate from the weekly um, to coincide with um, the summer periods and as we all know there are very hot summers in our in our region etc and have the bins um, being exposed for two weeks I had some concerns about that in regards to the contents. Um, within the bin sitting in our in our environment uh, two weeks. Um, uh, upon upon looking at the evidence and also the audits that were done in regards to the bins itself and, and et cetera, I've sort of backtracked a little bit and then taking in consideration from Councillor Brophy's additions too as well. Um, our survey between the red the red lean bin and the green lean bin was interesting. Of course, eighty six percent of the residents said that they want to leave the red bin uh, to continue on a weekly basis. Problem being that over, you know, over time residents are not using that red and green bins to the purposes from a waste um, um, waste management point of view. The curbside uh, audit results indicated that 53% of the red bin uh, bin contents was made up of of organic material, comprising of 42% food waste, 11% was garden waste, and 16% of recyclable material which could, uh, could be diverted from the red lead bin. So, uh, you know, the education uh, process um, of red lead bins, et cetera, but it's you know, been a lot of, a few elders out there and in the, in the smaller unit systems, and et cetera, where they do, they would sort of also look at trying to adopt a share system in regards to the red bin, the yellow bin and the green bin. Green bin, in some cases where the units is not adequate for them because there's no small amount of you know, garden clippings, et cetera, so there was a shared sort of approach. 
So, um, so I couldn't gauge that in regards to it. I have to look at the picture. Um, further support for that Workley Green Bin collection instead of current fortnightly collection. It's misconceptions of the usage and the contents of, of, of what goes into the green bin, for example, food waste, seafood, um, meat and food waste. Now, I'm, I know myself, I was very guilty of not using the, you know, the green bin um, properly for its purposes. So I think, and we've had, we had lengthy discussions about this in regards to a strong education campaign, I think we need to adopt to this as well. And I know other council do have um, um, stickers on the front of their bins, and if, if we can include that too as well, I'd like to see that happen. Um, the change will address a number of environmental... Would you like? Yes, thank you. Yep. Great. Um, uh, environmental and climate safe considerations. Um, but most importantly, if we look at it will reduce waste to landfill, which in turn supports a circular economy for our community. It supports emission reductions, which is further strengthening our commitment towards um, zero emissions and the targets in 2030. It will also reduce carbon emissions um, through our, throughout our region too as well. The glass, the glass bin or the purple lid, lid rated um, highly, um, up to 80%, uh, coupled with our yellow bins, um, recycle bin. This will complement each other as well and allow more space for in our yellow bins. Um, obviously, um, the, the cash deposit um, um, locations and, and um, they will also complement, I think, it, when we do get them on board, and I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that they will come soon. Um, but also uh, that with the glass bins, with that, that fourth bins, um, our community have also got to find little extra spaces and extra slabs for that, for that bin as well. So I don't think that that will be convenient, and at $1.85 per year, I think that that's very comfortable for our community to, to budget. Thank you, Ben. Great, thank you, Councillor James. Before I go back to you, Councillor Brophy, if you'll write a reply, I'll just try and um, add a few comments around this. And obviously, I am supportive of this transition, but I think when we look back uh, six months ago when this conversation first started, I, I was definitely one of those people that had reached out uh, to probably most of us councillors over the last couple of days once it went public about what we were proposing. And yeah, absolutely, no one likes significant change, and this is significant change. But I'm privy to the information that we've been able to get together as councillors over the course of the last six months. And I feel personally in a much better position because I have highlighted to a number of people that have reached out that these are those decisions that we as ratepayers um, effectively enforce on ourselves as well. So we're doing this with you. Uh, we're going to go along on the journey with you. Uh, the education is going to be there for all of us and it's vitally important that the additional line item that Councillor Brophy brought in allows for you know, up-to-date reviews that will come through and ensure that over the course of the next 18 months to two years that we will bring you along the journey, we'll ensure that the education is there for you and what needs to take place to get us to a position that we're better than where we are now. That's the reality of it, right? So we can look at all these high-level high figures of what we want to try and get to, but we need to be better than what we're doing now, and, and these changes will, will force a better outcome. No, I have no doubt about that. I just want to highlight that Gary uh, Randwana, our Director of Infrastructure, who actually rolled this out um, in his previous job, I believe at Macedon, you might want to correct me if that's not the case, and that uh, also offers me more comfort and security around making this decision that we genuinely have someone who has done this elsewhere and is aware of the challenges that he faced with that council in the past and we're going to bring that on board and make sure that this is as smooth as transition as it can possibly be. Yes, we will have hiccups along the way, absolutely, but we're going to experience them with you and we're going to get through it and we'll no doubt get a better outcome um, towards the back end of this. So, Sorry, Mr. Mayor. Is the actual recommendation on screen as, as Councillor Brophy has The additional item, I was going to ask that, but I presume it hasn't been supplied in, in a format to... No, it's, it was an alternate, so it's added. Okay. So you didn't get it early enough to potentially have it up there, so is that any it's concerns fine. with that? I'll see it written down, but I expect Yeah, if I remember it. <laughs> Would you like to um, just read out... Well, that, that is it for me. Um, I won't say anything else. We will go to write a reply. But, Councillor Brophy, I will ask you to just read out your additional line item, if possible. Certainly. So I'll read out, um, again, 13.1, uh, curbside transition planning. I won't read the first uh, few items, but the additional item that I've included in there is point three, 
which is provide a detailed report to be presented to council no later than December 2022, ordinary council meeting, which sets out the implementation and that process, highlighting specifics on the incremental transition and to include aspects on the education of recycling and the new transition, the marketing process and the monitoring of the implementation. You happy with that, Councillor Adam? Yes, thank you. Clear enough. Everyone else around the table is aware of that additional item. All right, Councillor Brofeld, give your opportunity for right or reply. Thank, thank you, Mayor Sarley. As I uh, start uh, the conversation at the very beginning, <laughs> from time ago now, um, any change will have the challenges. And we've heard from uh, all the councillors in terms of what those challenges might be. Um, and I do compliment, um, obviously, uh, Gary, who is Masseton Rangers, of course, that's where uh, the transition came in over there. And But I've also done the due diligence in speaking to other councillors uh, from those particular shires and municipalities that have rolled this out. And what are some of the things that, that uh, have challenged them in terms of doing that? Um, I can tell you now that people in the street have come up to me and they are concerned. Family members are concerned and work colleagues are concerned. And if I was given a survey and said, you know, would I want a fourth bin? I'd say, no, of course not. I don't want a fourth bin. Do I want to see a change to the system? No, I don't. But, you know, and you know, the challenge is being, you know, like a family of six with two dogs and maybe one baby with disposable nappies. You know, how do they manage their particular waste? Here lies the challenge. Here lies the transition. But here lies the most important thing, which is the education and the marketing in and around this. And to explain to people in, in, in common sense language how we actually go about it. What goes in what bin? What doesn't go in that bin? How, when does it go out? When does it not go out? I can tell you, once it's rolled out, within a few months, you won't even notice in terms of uh, where, where the frequency, et cetera. And you know, there are modelling, as I mentioned, from other councils. We can see the modelling and the impact that that has had within their council. We've been privy to those briefings and we're, we understand how that particular rollout is. So it is education, it is marketing, and um, let's move forward. Great. Thank you, Councillor Brophy. Uh, we will now go to the vote. All those in favour? Those against? Motion carried. Councillors, we now go to page 57 of the agenda, item 13, and that's a ward of contract CN 2253, reconstruction of Nixon Street, Shepparton. There is a recommendation. Can I please also put that forward as a motion? Thank you, Mr. Dobson. Thank you, Mayor Sally. I move that the Council accept the tender submitted by Morton Constructions Proprietary Limited for contract number uh, 2253, reconstruction of Nixon Street, Shepparton, for a lump sum price of $2,102.20. Excluding GST and authorise the Chief Executive Officer to execute such documents as are necessary with respect to this resolution. Great, thank you, Councillor Dobson. Can I please have a Councillor second that motion? Second the motion, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Adam. Councillor Dobson, would you like to speak to the motion? One of the most pleasing aspects of this uh, reconstruction will be the roundabout on the corner of Nixon and Harold Street. Uh, when I go to see uh, Shepparton United versus Shepparton and see a big uh, up and going up to the ball. I've, I've, I've got to uh, go against all the traffic and uh, it's a very dangerous intersection because <laughs> Harold Street, as we know, is a very small street and Nixon Street is the flow through. So now people will have to take extra care uh, in, going, in going through that intersection. But it's not only the roundabout on that, uh, on that Harold and Nixon Street, it is uh, right from Corriah through to Screen Street. And there's a full gamut of works that have got to be done. <laughs> Uh, but one of the a couple of interesting stuff that I've noted in this report is that the the tree cells and associated tree plantings, and that's what's becoming a feature of Shepherd in these days, is that wherever we do a transition or reconstruction of uh, streetscapes, uh, a tree planting is, is one of our is, is one of our highlights. And I'd like to congratulate our Chief Executive Officer and his team in making sure that those things go through. Not only that, we've got curbing and footpaths and pedestrian crossings and line marking and signage and re-establish the nature strips and other disturbed items on site. And I'll be looking with great interest as to how that's carried out. Morton's constructions are basically a, a, a Goulburn-Murray Valley-based 
company that's been uh, given the job, uh, they are the conforming, uh, conforming tenderer to deliver the required scope provided. Uh, they provided the methodology statement, they provided clear and un a clear understanding of the project, and so they should. They've been doing this for quite some time, so I have a degree of confidence that Mawson Constructions will do a great job. But the other interesting part I notice is this, that the, is that the budget, as I understand, was at $2.6 million, and the actual tender price, including GST, is $2.3 million or excluding GST, 2.1, nearly $2.2 million, which gives us nearly half a million dollars um, of, uh, of excess, that is, uh, budget over, over actual cost. And that's going to be redistributed within other projects within the road program, and I think that's very important. We'd hate to think that we're doing work uh, that, um, that goes above budget, and I'd like to congratulate our planning people for being able to work out a budget that, that is, on the, is on the right side of the ledger. Uh, Nixon Street, uh, as we know, uh, has been in the news lately and it continues to be in the news and it'll be fantastic to see this, this upgrade. There's nothing better than seeing fresh new uh, uh, streetscapes within the, the city of Chevron and elsewhere for that example. But certainly um, the, the crux of the matter to me is that roundabout in the corner of uh, Nixon and Harold Street. All right, thank you, Councillor Dobson. Councillor Adam, would you like to speak to the motion? Um, I'll reserve my right. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I may speak to it later on in the meeting. No problem. <laughs> That's okay with you. So we haven't had one of them yet, so I won't. <laughs> um, are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? Councillor Spinks. Thank you. Not to speak against the tender being awarded. Um, congratulations to the successful applicant. And also pointing out this is a fully funded um, project by the local roads and community infrastructure funding and the roads to recovery funding. So ultimately it's not actually costing council anything, which is fantastic. Always really nice to say. Um, but I you know, just want to raise again um, today and ongoing, we do seem to spend an awful lot of money on not only the centre of Greater Shepparton, but the centre of Shepparton. It does, it seems to be a recurring theme. Um, and I only raise it, uh, and I did in briefings as well raise, um, that I can't help but question uh, the equity of that distribution. Um, I am comforted by knowing that this is a priority intersection um, for safety uh, reasons. Um, but the reality is that uh, getting, I understand, getting Packham Street upgraded was an ongoing battle that there are, um, even this week we had intersections at Channel Road and um, Archer Street uh, as a dangerous intersection raised. There are just, um, and you know, there is quite a bit of rat racing that's been caused by the uh, Greater Shepparton and Secondary College um, traffic that suddenly is there as well as the competing schools. So I just want to raise that there are only Shepparton examples, there would be examples across our municipality um, as well. Just noting that um, we seem to see an awful lot happening in the centre of Shepparton and uh, making sure we are equally distributing these projects across our municipality. Thank you. Great, thank you, Councillor Spinks. Are there any councillors that would like to speak for the motion? Councillor James. Thank you, Mayor Sully. Um, I'll share your concerns, um, Councillor Spinks. Um, there are a number of projects around our town which uh, could possibly equally have the justification for that too as well. This is a very important um, uh, link um, of the a section of our community. It's um, uh, a heavy populated with buses. Um, it is a major link, a linkage towards one of the, um, the uh, schools in our town too as well. Um, but it's another, it's also another avenue in regards to um, the installation of stormwater draining, drainage too as well. So. The more we do in our cells, in our area, in regards to improving the stormwater drainage in our town, we all know it's a bit of a, um, it is a concern, the stormwater in our town. So this is another way of actually improving the stormwater drainage system, as well as um, other parts associated with it too as well, the tree cells, the, the concrete curbing and footpaths, it's all beautifying our area. Um, but again, um, I come back to the importance of this and and as pointed out um, by Councillor Dobson, um, $400,000 is a nice little bonus for us too as well in that pickup. Uh, thank you, yeah. Councillor James. Are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Before I go to Councillor Dobson, do I reply? did you want to take your opportunity? Yes, thank you, Mayor. I will, Mr Mayor. Um, I just want to touch on Councillor Spinks' uh, commentary. Yeah, look, 
No doubt there's many other intersections, and I know some myself personally that I could probably nominate and say I think they need attention. However, I'm confident that the, the organisation has uh, done this on a priority assessment basis. We could go through, as Councillor um, Dobson said, we've got Deakin Reserve. It's a main thoroughfare for a lot of buses now as well. So there's no doubt there's data supporting that the traffic flow through that particular area uh, highlights this particular road and that route proposed roundabout as being a priority. That's not to say that the others are less uh, worthy of the money being spent. I fully support it. Um, I hope it gets done sooner rather than later. Um, so, yeah, I don't think it's Shep centric at all, to be honest. Um, if you class that as central Shepparton, well, I'd almost class the Channel Road as Shepparton as well. It all, it's all Shepparton to a degree. Um, I, and I think you'll find that we, the equity as you were referring to, I don't, I don't think is as large a, a gap as we may, as we may think it is. But that's my opinion, of course. However, I fully support this. I think that this has been assessed correctly. And uh, I hope it gets done yeah, quite quickly. All right, thank you, Councillor Adam. Uh, I think uh, that is it. We'll now go to Councillor Dobson for your right of reply. Yes, I, I fully uh, agree with your comments, Councillor Spinks, but I, I've also noted that when you take Knight Street, you take Skeen Street, and you take Nixon Street, not only is it uh, increased bus routes, uh, but the schools and their sporting facilities. But the other interesting thing in both in all of those streets is the amount of increased residential properties, uh, two and three storey properties are going into those areas, uh, and it's it's also that means traffic flow is increasing. So, I from a practical point of view, um, I, I think it's important. The other aspect is this: that we've got to keep up our, our reinvestment into roads and what have you. We, you know, it's very important that we keep doing that. So again, this is this for's and against. But I think the fours on this, it's, it's got to be done. Nixon Street, my view would be Nixon Street over the next 20 years will become a, a major, you know, a major area for development. That's where I would see it. Um, I think it's now partly commercial. Anywhere down there, especially around this precinct, there is now commercial operations going on, professional offices and the multi-storey dwellings, etc. So I think it's high time. Uh, but certainly uh, if... Um, if Channel Road is put up, I'll certainly vote for that. <laughs> right, right, great. Thank you, Councillor Dobson. Uh, we will now go to the vote. Those in favour? <laughs> Motion carried on opposed. Councillors, we now go to we now go to uh, page 61 of the agenda, item 13.3, and that's award of contract CN 2246, panel of supplies. Concrete services and associated works. There is a recommendation. Can I please have a council put that forward as a motion? Councillor okay. Summer. Thank you, Mayor Sally. I'll move that the council one accept the tenders submitted by Cleves Earth Moving and Drainage PTY Ltd. and Tactile Australia Proprietary Limited TA One Stop Civil for contract number. 2246 Concrete Services and Associated Works Panel of Suppliers. And rather than read out the others, I'll say point two and three as it reads on page 61 of the agenda. Right, thank you, Councillor Summer. Can I please have a Councillor second that motion? I'll second the motion, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Adam. Would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, thank you, Mayor Sally. Really just um, housekeeping. We can't really get away from the fact that we have to build roads, maintain roads and do concrete. Concreting, it's a rather large contract that should see us through for a long time. And it's nice to see that we're um, expected to use a lot of recycled material in these works, which uh, will contribute to our closed loop waste economy. Right. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Councillor Adam, would you like to speak to the motion? Right, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Adam. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? Any councillors that would like to speak for the motion? That will now go to the vote. All those in favour? Motion carried on vote. Thank you. Councillors, we now go to page 65 of the agenda, item 13.4, and that's adoption of sports facility use and signage policy. There is a recommendation. Can I please have a councillor put that forward as a motion? Thank you, Councillor Brophy. Uh, thank you, Mayor Sally. Um, if I could please, um, 13.4, adoption of the sports facility and use and signage policy. Uh, the recommendation is that the council adopt the sports facility use and signage policy as attached to this report. I'd like to add with the following changes to the policy. 
and that those changes being uh, under 1.8 of the policy under signage, second dot point, uh, where it reads um, is still to be retained, uh, where there are multiple user groups of, at one facility, equal share of sponsorship signage area will be allocated. User groups who book the facility may cover the, uh, may cover the other user's sign if written permission is approved from the sign owner. I'd like to add on to that uh, dot point that, however, if a venue club is of a competitive status at a regional, state, national or international standing and is professionally live streamed and is a professionally live streamed event, then such written permission is not required from the aforementioned sign owner, but that su such signage is to be authorised by the CEO or under delegation. Uh, this last iteration is to come into effect as of the 1st of January 2024. Thank you, Councillor Brophy. Can I please have a councillor second that motion? Do you want to see that? No. Oh, I'm not going to do that. I'm not legally capable of doing it. Um. Well, I have to, I have to yeah, take it for can, what it is. Yeah, yeah. Get, get on, yeah. I'm just telling you that. That's fine. Um, can I have a councillor second that motion? Do you, councillor Summer? I'll second for the purpose of debate. Thank you. Uh, councillor Brophy, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mayor Sali. Uh, yes. Uh, there have been some uh, minor changes uh, from when this was originally uh, presented to council last December. Um, can I please pay compliments and applaud the team in infrastructure, particularly parks, sport and recreation. Um, they have presented, as I said in December and I say again now, a very sound and very workable policy. Um, a review of this policy uh, has been set uh, for up to, to 2025, um, but I'd certainly like to see a review of that uh, perhaps within a, a two year period and not a three year period. But specifically around the uh, alteration to the signage 1.8. The reason why I brought that forward again is uh, to, be, to, uh, to be also consistent with across the municipality. If, for instance, we had the Commonwealth Games here, which is a whole new debate, but if we did, obviously their, their signage would cover up any other potential uh, non-major um, supporters of the Commonwealth Games and uh, nobody would bat an eyelid. You would also have it say a Deacon Reserve as an example where co-tenants have worked uh, harmoniously in putting up their signage over many decades, that if a VFL team came along and it was opposing uh, uh, sponsorship there, that there'd be no hesitation in the CEO approving uh, that that would be changed, uh, the signage, uh, because it's going to be televised or live streamed. No difference in that. We can speak about uh, Sports City and we can talk about uh, many sports there, but the soccer field is a perfect example where there are multi users of that. And hence we do have one particular um, uh, sporting club that is of a higher status than the others in terms of live streaming, etc. If local clubs and representatives, as for mentioned status, agree to terms to allow their principal sponsorship uh, to get a clear run on uh, match days, all the very all the better. If they cannot agree, then this iteration can come into play. Um, I put down 18 months in, in terms of uh, this provides any recalibration of uh, sponsors or to notice of sponsors uh, should they need to of any of the clubs there as well. I believe that this is a sensible change. And as the umpire would say, play on. Thank you, Councillor Brophy. Councillor Summer, would you like to speak to the motion? I'll reserve my right. Who did you learn that from? <laughs> Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? I'd like to foreshadow a motion in the event that this motion by Councillor Brophy is lost. Thank you, Councillor Dobson. Uh, are there any councillors that would like to speak for the motion? Councillor Spinks. Only to say, I think that the strength of this policy, um, though its need has been raised through some local um, clubs and their uh, situations, this 
policy has been designed to apply to all of our facilities. So this is um, what it's done is raise a potential gap as we have um, sporting clubs within our community that are raising to new levels. Um, and what it's it's simply identified a gap in our policies. So what this policy has um, tried to address is how we then look at that from any sporting code uh, conversation that we're having. And I think Councillor Brophy raised it well um, in terms of the Com Games um, or the VFL or I know rugby's having a real moment in Shep and um, whatever it may be, I think that's the purpose of the policy and just making sure um, that's first and foremost and whether this policy, the way that it's set out in front of us today, uh, meets that need or not is how I'll be debating it, uh, deciding on it. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Councillor Spinks. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? Are there any councillors that would like to speak for the motion? Thank you, Councillor Adam. Thank you, Chair. Look, in principle, I agree with um, Councillor Brophy's proposed um, addition or change. Um, but where, are, where there are multiple user groups, so I'd suggest that every sporting ground we have in Shepparton is utilised by multiple user groups. So this is something that needs to be addressed. That policy, the simpler the policy, the better normally. But in this instance, and again, I've forgotten what you said word for word, Councillor Brophy, because it was quite an additional uh, uh, addition there in text. I would love to have it in front of me, but I don't. Because um, there was a lot of ifs and buts there, by the sounds of it, from memory. is if this, when that. But not there, no? Not going to happen? OK, fine. So just from memory, uh, Councillor Brophy, I think I, I do I'll agree at this stage, but we, we need the ability to react to if we get an international event, and if this sits as it does, and the uh, owners of the previous sign say no, well then, we're going to jeopardise an international or national event, potentially. So yes, in a, I, I do support it, even though it's a little bit vague in my mind as exactly, exactly what, it's, what it states. Thank you, Councillor Adam. Councillor Summer, would you like to um, take your opportunity just that I'm looking forward to getting an outcome in this so that we don't have to revisit it again for a long time. <laughs> Great, thank you. Are there, any, uh, are there any other councillors that would like to speak to it? Oh, you do. Okay, yep, no worries, thank you. Thank you, uh, Mayor Sarley. Um, whilst I agree in principle with the theory behind this, I, I feel that the consequences um, could be the consequences of allowing this to happen uh, could be uh, slightly beyond the council's ability to handle it in-house. Um, and I'm talking about legalities here. And I would have preferred that if we get, if we get uh, international, national or regional uh, sporting uh, events coming, that there could be a, let's sit down and you know, for the space of a couple of hours, let's 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 talk about it and get the parties to agree on that basis. Now, we know that's going to be difficult, but, and 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 we as a council have been put into a position that we should never have been put into. However, we're there now, uh, but only on the basis that I'm not a hundred percent sure that this is a a foolproof um, a motion to be to put up. Uh, I, I I think. What you've said it has got is practical, but I think um, from uh, 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 could I say um, a claim in equity uh, could come forward, um, and that's a term that's been used in an email that I have in front of me. Um, that could be a claim that we may not get out of very quickly. So uh, I may sound a bit vague on it, but I'm I'm not 100% uh, uh, convinced this is the way to go. So I would be voting against it. Yes, I just want to clarify that you're speaking against. So I'm speaking I can, against it. So I can make sure that Councillor Brophy gets his opportunity of right or reply. Uh, are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? No, Councillor Brophy, I'll give you your opportunity for right or reply before we go to the vote. Um, thank you very much. It's, it, it's interesting um, uh, that the mention of the, the legality comes uh, only minutes before this particular meeting when it was raised back in December and we're now in July. However, um, that was standing, I've looked at it and in terms of, uh, from a legality point of view, that what would be the difference in terms of um, commercial uh, contracts uh, between uh, clubs and uh, their particular sponsors and um, 
signage that's there if it was any different uh, coming in from an international perspective. I mean, if uh, if the, the Commonwealth Games came or if it was the AFL or NRL or whatever it was, and they said, look, we're not going to be here until unless, you know, we have our own particular signage up, which we're sponsors for, would we say no to that? No, we wouldn't. And there's no different in this particular case. And so the, and, and if there was a legality for this one, there'd be a legality for that one as well. So I, I can't see the difference in terms of, of that, whether it be a um, uh, regional, state, national or international standard, what the difference in terms of the legality would be. That, that's my right of reply. And Thank therefore, you, I, I still think <laughs> that particular addition uh, to that um, actually uh, facilitates uh, better understanding. I can, I can say now that that uh, those uh, outside the region, I mean, obviously we look internally because it's our municipality, but outside the region, when uh, other people are talking about Shepparton, they're not talking about our, uh, the smaller clubs, they're talking about what status they are at regional level or state level. They're not talking about the, the, the smaller clubs. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Brophy. We'll now go to the vote. All those in favour? Those against? Motion carried. Councillors, we now go to page 68 of the agenda, item 13.5, adoption of sale and acquisition of land policy. There is a recommendation. Can I please have the councillor put that forward as a motion? Councillor Spinks. Thank you, Mayor Sally. I move the recommendation to a motion that the council adopt the sale and acquisition of land policy as attached to this report. Thank you, Councillor Spinks. Can I please have a councillor second that motion? I, move, I will second the motion that the council adopt the sale and acquisition of land policy as attached to this report. Thank you, Councillor Dobson. Councillor Spinks, <laughs> would you like to speak to the motion? Oh, sure. Um, it's a pretty straightforward one. Uh, the purpose of the policy is to provide a framework to sell land owned by Greater Shepparton City Council, ensuring consideration is given to council strategy, legislation and best practice, transparency and community need and expectation. This policy applies to all land that is owned by the council and is available to be sold, as well as land that council seeks to purchase. Um, it is uh, just good governance to have this policy and it just puts some um, guidelines in place uh, that were already being operated under, but now it's in a policy and clear as day. Thank you. Great, thank you, Councillor Spinks. Councillor Dobson, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, just briefly, uh, this policy allows anybody who wants to deal with council in relation to sale or purchase of land knows what our rules and regulations are and they would operate within that framework. And I think it's it's very good information to be able to give out. Great, thank you, Councillor Dobson. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? Are there any councillors that would like to speak for the motion? No, we will now go to the vote. All those in favour? Council, we now go to page 70 of the agenda, item 13.6, Shepparton Sports City Master Plan. There is a recommendation. Can I please have a councillor put forward a motion? Councillors, I need someone to move that, please. Thank you, councillor Spinks. Thank you, Mayor Sally. I will move the recommendation to a motion that the council, one, receive the consultation findings outlined within the Shepparton Sports City Master Plan Stakeholder Consultation Summary Report, and two, adopt the final Shepparton Sports City Master Plan as attached to this report. Thank you, Councillor Smiths. Can I please have a councillor second that motion? Second the motion, Mr Mayor. Councillor Adam. Councillor Smiths, would you like to speak to the motion? Only really briefly to say, um, obviously the Shepparton Sports City, uh, the sports precinct in North Shep, is home to a great number of sporting um, codes, sporting events. Um, it's a rapidly developing space, and we've also considering, you know, how the, the stadium is um, uh, developed. We're talking about Manara in that space. We're looking at the parking. We're looking at how everybody utilizes it. And all of that needs a master plan. You really need to look at it in a holistic way and make sure that you're um, considering everything in um, conjunction with everything else that is going in in that space. So I support this master plan. As with any master plan, it is a guiding document but is not locking anything into place. Um, but it is important to have it anyway to make sure you have a direction and some um, 
a, a way forward. So I support this master plan. Thanks. Great. Councillor Sphinx. Councillor Adam, would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, thanks, Mr. Mayor. I don't have much <coughs> knowledge on this recent master plan. I could just regurgitate the executive summary, but I won't do that. <laughs> but as Councillor Spink said, um, this is, we're not married to this document. It's, um, it's an anchor point and it gives us some guidance moving forward. And as things change, we no doubt we'll change the plan accordingly. Great. Thanks, Councillor Adam. Are there any councillors that would like to speak? Thanks for the motion. Councillors that would like to speak for the motion. Councillor Brophy. Uh, thank you, Mayor Sally. Just very briefly to say, uh, well done to the council officers who have worked on this. I mean, we, we go back to this particular master plan. I think the first one was back in about um, 1998. So we're looking, you know, uh, 24 years and a number of um, updates on the on the master plan. And has that whole precinct changed greatly in that period of time? And uh, a lot of uh, money's been invested by uh, council. Uh, a lot of the community clubs have invested uh, time, energy, blood, sweat and tears to, to get it to the standard that it is. And the master plan is uh, very solid in, in going forward as well. And it does highlight a number of um, uh, sports that are maybe declining and uh, where they need to be picked up or um, ones that are actually flourishing. So I think it's an excellent report. Councillor Brophy, are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Councillor Summer. Thank you, Mayor Sally. Just to be specific, I'll read out a couple of the minor changes that have been proposed. So upgrading, maintaining perimeter fencing of the athletics track, uh, renew multi-purpose multi pile to the hockey area, upgrade the pathway between two pavilions for universal access, um, lengthen the main soccer pitch, um, and that'll accommodate high level events such as rugby in the Commonwealth Games 2026, we hope. Uh, implement more sports city branded branding around the place and uh, and yeah I think minor things like that and I believe that it also had a component component that considered the development of the Manara Centre I can't find it in the report but it, but yeah it's it's a great master plan and it's great that it's done in conjunction with the user groups in the community so I'll support it as well. Great. Are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? No, we'll now go to the vote. All those in favour? Motion carried on opposed. Councillors, we now go to page 77 of the agenda, which is item 14, confidential management reports. 14.1, which is designation of confidentiality of information and there is no action required with that. And 15 documents for sign in and sealing. It's nil received. We go to page 78 of the agenda, which is 16.1.1, Councillor Activities for June 2022. Uh, there is a recommendation. Can I please have a councillor put that forward as a motion? Thank you, Councillor Summer. Thank you, Mayor Sali. I'll move that the council receive and note the summary of the councillors' community interactions and informal meetings of councillors. Right, thanks, Councillor Summer. Can I please have someone second that motion? Second the motion, Mr. Yep. Thanks, Councillor Adam. Councillor Summer, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, just briefly, it's uh, always good to see these lists because it does uh, prove that we do get out and about collectively as well as individuals. It um, needs to include all of the community events that we've been invited to and attend in a, an official capacity, and they are all very, very positive, fun events that um, continually give us insight into pockets of our community that we may not be familiar with. So try to accept all of the invitations as we can just to um, get these opportunities because it is a very privileged position that we have and the more we're out and about the better we can utilise our skills in our role and bring back to the table what the community need. So informal meetings of councillors, um, potentially that may not capture everything because it is quite a lot. And if there's more than three or four councillors, I believe that we need to begin to start um, to take minutes. So, so it could be unrealistic to have absolutely everything in there, but we certainly have tried our best to be as transparent as possible. Thanks, Councillor Summer. Councillor Adam, would you like to speak to the motion? No, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? Any councillors that would like to speak for the motion? Right, we'll now go to the vote. All those in favour? Motion carried on opposed. We'll now go to page 80 of the agenda, which is 16.2 council committee reports nil received and 16.3 notice of motion amendment or rescission. We do have one under 16.3.1 notice of motion 7, 2022 skate park strategy. Councillors, there is a recommendation. Can I please have a council put that forward as a motion? 
Thank you. I would like to move uh, a recommendation to a motion that the council officers present a report to a council meeting within three months, outlining one, the history and current status of all municipal skate parks, two, all past and current community requests, either by individuals or committees, relevant to municipal skate parks, including but not limited to safety, lighting and condition, and three, examples of infrastructure models that support a higher level of skate park skill attainment or participation. Councillor Spinks, can I please have a Councillor second that motion? Thank you, Councillor Summer. Councillor Spinks, would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, thank you, uh, Mayor Sally. Right, bit of energy for the end of the meeting. Um, now, I'm very, um, I hate that I have to start uh, this way, but between me putting in this not notice of a motion and coming to this council meeting, there has been quite a bit of media attention to some graffiti that has occurred in the skate park. I want to point out that, that is not the way to get your voice heard. Uh, this work was already being done. I'd already put it in for us to have this debate. Um, we care about it. We hear you out there saying it. All graffitiing does or, you know, raising your voice in that way does. It's cost us money to clean it up. It's just not a, an efficient or um, good way to get it done. So I do not want to set a precedent that that sort of behaviour will get this result because that isn't how this came about and it will not. Um, to the actual notice of motion. So I've put this in because over, um, from what I understand, many, many years there have been many individuals uh, advocating for um, our local skate parks. And certainly during this term, it has come to light. Um, it started with the 2021-22 20, uh, budget. We had a petition come to us that had hundreds of signatures um, from uh, community members uh, within our municipality and outside of our municipality that uh, want to see action on the Shepparton and Skate Park. Further to that, there was some allocation of budget to have lighting put in, but that didn't also um, have the conversation around potential upgrades. Then we had Tatura um, uh, community planning groups come out and say that they are wanting upgrades for their skate parks. And all of these things are sort of uh, built on each other, but nothing's been addressed. And skate parks do not exist within any of our current strategies. They're just sort of a, um, a community asset that's really undervalued and, and really just floating around. So what I really want to do with this um, report, and all I'm asking for is a report, is I want to gather all that information. And I want to bring it to the table and have an actual conversation about it um, and about what it's going to look like. Because as far as I'm concerned, this is one of those community assets that is important to our connectedness, to our kids getting out there, to the adults that enjoy skateboarding and, um, you know, scooters and uh, roller skates and whatever it is. It's now a, an Olympic sport. I mean, this is a, a very relevant um, community asset for us to be discussing. And so in this report, I'm asking for um, a few different things. We have a couple of different skate parks across the municipality, so I want to know all of them, where they came from, what's happened to them and where they are now. I also want to look at um, all past and current community requests by individuals or committees. So I want to know if there's um, people out there who have been talking about them. I want to know if there's committees that have been asking for them that don't have them. I just want to know everything. Whatever it is that Council's heard, you know, bring it to us in a report. And then I also want to look at um, examples of infrastructure models that support... Would you, yeah. Yes, please. Grander. Thank you. Um, a higher level of skate park skill attainment or participation. One of the comments that's been raised through this is, is that there are people who have um, reached a level of skill or participation that is beyond our existing, just, you know, free community assets. So what does that look like when you want to push further past that? If skateboarding, let's use skateboarding, for example, um, is, now, is a competitive sport, how do you attain that? Where do you go? What is that infrastructure? <coughs> I don't know that answer at all. Um, so I want to look at, is it a council business? Is it a private business that delivers that? I don't know, and I want to have that conversation. So I'm asking for this report to just collate all that information. I'm not asking for it to cost a lot. I just want to know what council officers can find out and can bring to us so we can have this conversation properly and together um, with all of the information in one place. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Councillor Spinks. Councillor Summer, would you like to speak to the motion? I'll reserve my rights. <laughs> no worries. So much to be for. That you bring to the table. Um, are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? Are there any councillors that would like to speak for the motion? Councillor Brophy. 
Uh, thank you, Mayor Sally. Uh, <coughs> congratulations, Councillor Spinks, on bringing this forward. I know you've been working on this for months and months and months. So it does go back uh, some way. And of course, you know, we've all been invigorated with uh, skateboarding from the Olympics, uh, which was so successful in, in watching that as well. And you're certainly right in pointing out that graffiti is not the answer. In fact, it's a criminal offence. And I know I won't speak any more on that because I know police are investigating that aspect of it. But you're right in bringing this forward about the history, about the current status and about looking forward in regards to that. I mean, Chippenden Skate is certainly suitable for beginners and the intermediate, and you, you quite often see that. But to go to a higher level, uh, and including a semi-professional level, perhaps a different design and different funding and a different venue may be required for that, that aspect of things. Um, but you're right in looking across the whole municipality. I mean, we were recently in, in Tatura, and you just need to have a look. It is well past its use by date in terms of, uh, of that. And it needs to be incorporated, obviously, in uh, Matsia Park, and, and that needs to be upgraded and that as well. So I won't predetermine anything that will come out of that report, but um, there are, in my view, there are and looking across not just being shepherd and centric but looking across our municipality that we need to make sure that that um, skate parks and all future skate parks are for everybody right across and can be shared as well thank you thanks councillor brophy are there any other councillors that would like to speak for the motion Councillor Dobson. yeah firstly just congratulate councillor spinks on the work that she's done has been highlighted and uh, well done I think this is a prime example of where councillors can uh, lead, uh, take a lead in, in looking at the provision of assets, additional assets for the communities. And, and it, we're asking for a report and that's about it at the moment. It, it's interesting, the, the build up of skateboards, et cetera, now into, a, uh, in, into commercial and uh, you know, into international status. Um, and Shepparton, uh, for example, has done very well. I remember many years ago when the Shepparton Skate Park was, uh, was announced that there was that many people against it putting it in a main park because it would attract all the wrong sorts of people. That's how stupid some of these comments were. I'll put it around the back near the river where nobody can see it. However, it, it is where it is now and, 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 and part of our infrastructure and a great part of our infrastructure. It's great to see the healthy lifestyle that, that, that it brings. So doing this audit or report or doing a, a preparing a report, I think will bring it all together and it'll be exciting to what it, what it might bring out. And uh, let's hope we can take it somewhere. Long-term plans, but again, I, I join with you and Councillor Brophy, uh, Brophy in saying that uh, putting graffiti on a skate park is no way uh, is not the right way to, to bring this sort of stuff to our attention. In fact, it was quite detrimental. And uh, certainly your report was uh, done quite before, or your motion was done quite before this graffiti was, was put on. So uh, I, 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 uh, I, I share your concerns about the graffiti. No graffiti is good. Great, thanks, Councillor Jepson. Um, are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? All right, Councillor Summer, would you like your opportunity? Thank you, Mayor. Um, what I love about this motion is that it does shine a spotlight on youth activities, in particular skate parks. Uh, it could just come back to us in a simple report that could inform our playground strategy. Councillor Spinks is quite right that skate parks do seem to be an add-on to the things that we do instead of a focus. So um, it was assumed to be part of our playground strategy already when it, in fact it was not included. So that's one example of why I think that this deserves a bit more attention. Um, I don't want to ever deny a councillor's request for more information. I think it's great that we have one who's so passionate about kids' activities and um, I want to harness that passion. So let's see where it goes. Well done, Councillor Speak. <laughs> Thanks, Councillor Summer. And yeah, I'll just briefly mention congratulations. Well done on putting this up. It's good work, and I'm I'm very keen, which has already been highlighted, to see what comes out from this because um, even I don't know enough about um, where these skate parks are and, and how we can do anything to upgrade the ones that require that as well. So good on you for doing this. We will now go to the vote. All those in favour? Motion carried. Unopposed. Councillors, we now go to page 81 of the agenda, item 17, urgent business not included on the agenda. Is there any other urgent business arising? Councillor Sully, I did have a urgent, I did have an urgent motion that was about the Katandra Hall, but I've been assured that it can be safely carried over to a future meeting, so I will reserve that. No problem. Item 18, close of meeting, which I will now do at 5.03 pm. Thank you very much. Um,